UK, big business, we make up in the UK. With them outlaws, no one <laughs> forever, and we mash hard, and we stay by the shadow. Yeah, man, so how I got introduced with Yankee, like, basically, one of my good friends named MC Ryder from Midlands Mafia, he was like, I was always showing him my instrumentals and everything, and then he was just like, ah, oh, you know, we're more into grime, like hip hop, and I was looking for more hip hop artists. So my other good friend named Coco and my other bedroom named Squires, like me and him, does all us three done a tune in the bedroom, in my bedroom and that, like they came over and like, you know, we just done one hip hop tune and what's that, because they were looking to get into hip hop. And then um, Squires' older brother named Lynx, like he heard the tunes and he was just like, yo, I'm giving these tunes to Yankee, man, because like, them lot are rapping, but they're just rapping like instrumentals. So then Yankee heard the tune and wanted to meet up with me. And then when he met up with me, he was telling me about his plans about making a rap group. And then he would like for me to give him instrumentals so they can have their own music instead of rapping on all the instrumentals. So I was just up for the up for the challenge and I was just giving him about five to ten beats, sometimes 20 beats every time I linked up with him. So we just done loads of songs together. But yeah, like um, some of my favourite rappers from Slash, like when the Yankees used to give me back the tapes and that, I used to like, I like um, E.T. was Banner B, Shot, I thought he was sick and that, I thought he was a brilliant rapper and that. And um, yeah, they were like, Shot and E.T. were my two favourite rappers when I was listening to their stuff coming back. And then um, Zimbo, he was locked up at that time. But yeah, man. And then after he came out and just smashed it with Hardball and that, you know, so... You know, history, man. Back in them days, a lot of the people, they were more into, like, East Coast beats and East Coast sounds, like Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang was, like, a big thing back then and all that stuff. And um, East Coast sounds, but I was more listening to West Coast music and down south, like, Master P. And I was listening to Death Row. Like, I come from that lineage. So when I was making my beats, my beats had, like, a synths in it, a lot of West Coast vibes. So like a lot of them, like, you know, I remember even Yankee was like, yo, bro, make it like an East Coast beat, man. Like, and I was like, bro, I'll do the West Coast synth sounds and all that. So it's like over time, a lot of people started to set the more down south kind of sounds. And, you know, they knew that, I just knew that music was changing because I was making music. I, I could see the change from East Coast, grimy, you know, proper jazz feel and all that, which I do love. And it obviously went back down south where it was more faster, baseline, you know, more synths from the West Coast. And the production was better and the quality of the music was better from the West Coast. And obviously down south, probably the quality wasn't as good as West Coast. But down south had more of a, you know, party feel, more of a bounce, bounce feel than that. And that I knew that was going to take over. I knew that was going to be the wave. And yeah. Join us on the line, bap.online.com for the hottest UK, US flavor. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be a fan when we drop some content.